Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser and we are modeling for Advantage. So today we're gonna to have a look at painting some US paratroopers. Uh, this is the paratroopers that I've got for Flames of War. And as hopefully you can see from the models and from some stills that we'll show you, that these are painted for a winter theme battle. Um, but the process is pretty much the same. The thing about these US paratroopers in the Bastogne sector 1944 is they weren't issued with a lot of winter equipment. They were issued with scarves and gloves mainly, um, although some of them managed to get hold of a few grey coats. If I have a single regret with uh, these models is that I probably should have tried to get a few winter US riflemen in grey coats and tried to mix them in a little bit. But anyway, I'm going to take you through the steps one at a time. We use very simple tabletop ready processes here and we try and take you through it as much as possible. Before we get going, here's a quick look at the paints that we're going to use in this. There is one small change, unfortunately. Um, I'm showing you the Crawford and Black uh, black acrylic there. I actually used the brown one but I've, for, for this project, but I've run out and I can't get any more at the moment. I thought for the purpose of this uh, video that wasn't terribly important. You can envisage that black one as a brown paint, I'm sure. I like to get my models glued on the base and the basic material added before I prime. I find that that helps the basic material make sure it's got some paint on it, help to adhere and any loose bits are going to come off during the painting process. But I also like to do the messiest parts of the modeling first. The thing I really don't like with a miniature for example is having gone through all the painting to then have to really carefully apply a basic material which is quite an untidy process. So you can see in this first still here I've primed these with a cheap black rattle can. There's lots of talk about different types of primers, black, white, the main color. I tend to use a cheap rattle can and I often go for black. So sticking with that principle about messy going on to tidy, I want to paint the base in the basing material. Bits are going to come off while you paint them. So do this now. It doesn't matter if you get any paint on the miniature because you're going to be painting that later. A lot of people talk about working from the inside of the miniature out so that you do the face and the hands and then the sleeves, etc. working to the outermost layers. Um, I tend to prefer to put the biggest blocks of colour in first so that I can be on tidy and gradually get neater towards the end of the process. The brown that I have used here is just a regular cheap brown acrylic paint. You can use a tester pot uh, for like wall paint or you can use some sort of artist acrylic but the quantity of paint that you're going to get by not buying miniature paint it's still acrylic it's still the same kind of stuff and it's still going to interact with all of your other paints perfectly well but for things like terrain and bases I buy very cheap paint. I'm using Russian Green World War II from Vallejo and it is a good match for Russian winter uniforms in World War II but it's not too bad for these winter 1944 paratroopers either. You can see that again I've been still quite untidy with this I've got that green everywhere that I'm going to have any kind of green and I'm not troubled myself about whether I've gone over face and hands and equipment and things like that at this stage really I just want to make sure that I've got I've got a layer of that green on pretty much everything to start softening the black. You definitely want to go with two coats on that. The first coat you probably want to apply quite thin to make sure it gets into all the nooks and crannies. The second coat again maybe a little bit thicker and a little bit brighter but two or three coats make sure that that green is nice and solid before you move on and then I moved on to the skin. Now I'm painting mine for winter 1944 so in most cases I'm actually going to paint the hands uh, as gloves and that's going to be like a dark green um, but you can see in this particular still here some of the models are sculpted in such a way as their sleeves are rolled up or whatever and it's pretty difficult to assume that this guy's wearing some kind of elbow length glove like he's a cabaret or something so in some cases you just had to go with that. I've used Cadian flesh tone from Games Workshop here, um, pretty much straight out of the pot, thinned down a little bit and put two coats on. Um, you could use a different flesh color and probably you want to go with whatever flesh color you're most comfortable with if you do a lot of painting. But I find that this plus the wash that we're going to apply later is good enough for 15 mil to give the face some definition. So yeah, we talked about going from 
on tidy to tidy, we're now reaching the spots at which it's starting to get quite important that we're a lot more careful. And I'm gonna use a few different sizes of brush here. I'm doing the webbing, um, and the webbing is probably the one item on this particular miniature that's gonna make the most difference in terms of making it pop a little bit. I use GW's Rackarth Flesh. I find that it makes for a good kind of bleached out canvas look. There's several different types of US webbing in use during the war, but a kind of bleached canvas is one of them. Whether this is the right one, I don't know, but it does provide some contrast to the model. And um, some of the stuff, like the backpacks, is a nice big area, but if you want to try and get the straps around the front for the webbing and some of the pouches, you're going to need to move to a smaller brush, um, and you're going to need at least two coats of this. It's worth doing it carefully. You might sometimes find it's quite difficult to pick the lines of the webbing and the backpack fastenings on the model. It might have all kind of blended in a little bit. It's up to you to decide whether you want to paint that or not. But a lot of those straps do disappear under the folds of the uniforms and other equipment. So don't feel that you have to draw them on if they're not sculpted on the model and you're not comfortable with it. This model's starting to look a little bit more like a soldier now. We've got our, our webbing and some of our equipment painted in that Rackarth flesh. And now we're going to paint the rifles. I've used GW's Mornfang Brown here, but you can use chocolate brown, you can use leather brown, use whichever brown you want to use for your rifles. Um, but I would suggest that you use the same brown across all of your models, is the only thing I would say for that. With the wooden parts of the rifles done, it's worth taking a moment to look at some of the uh, metallic parts on the rifles and any 30 cals or 50 cals that the squad might be carrying. Uh, these probably want to be painted black. I did in this instance uh, use German grey from Vallejo. Uh, it's not my idea, I picked it up uh, from various other painters. But the idea of using a really dark grey instead of a black is when you apply a black wash to it, it provides a little bit more contrast. Um, so the main things that you want to paint black are the machine guns, uh, almost entirely apart from the stock, um, SMGs of course, and the metal furniture on the rifle, so the very end of the Garand and the kind of bolt and so forth. It's really up to you how much and how accurately you want to paint those metal fi fixtures on the rifle. I've actually found over time with 15mm miniatures, I don't really notice whether they're there or not. So I tend to just paint the ends of the rifles these days, but it's up to you. The purist and the perfectionist is going to want to paint them. And there's millions of guides will show you exactly which parts of those rifles are metal. So we're really working on the smaller details now and the model's starting to come to life. Uh, so now we're going to paint any of the painted green items. Um, we want to use a different colour, quite a stri strikingly different green from the Russian uniform so that it still stands out after we've put the wash and it's going to help provide some variety in the model. So I'm actually using reflected green. Reflected green is, a kind, is the kind of colour that looks like an army green that you might buy in a kid's paint set. But I find it works well for pieces of equipment like bazookas, grenades, helmets, in just about any man's army. It might not be perfect, but it looks right and it's usually different from the main uniform colour. So the only other item apart from those type of things that I've painted with reflective green here is the gloves. I've just anybody whose hand looks like it could easily be gloved without making the model look ridiculous, I've just painted those in the reflective green too. Next step is to look at the boots. Uh, lots of different ideas about what color boots should be. A lot of people like black. I tend to like brown, but not always, um, especially because it helps to sort of with a 15 mil miniature, maybe it's a muddy black boot, maybe it's a brown boot. I've used leather brown here, which is a really dark brown from Vallejo. So it's, it's almost black, but it is gonna provide some variation between the ground beneath the model and this actual boot. Now, some of these models have gaiters, some of them don't, but if you look closely, you can see, hopefully, um, <laughs> that I've not troubled myself by that. I've just painted up to where the, uh, the pants tuck into the boots, painted that all brown. It's not perfect, it's not right, but it does the job. The last thing we've got to do then, uh, before we start applying our washes and so forth, is to paint any items that we've decorated our base with. As you progress through a whole batch of soldiers like this, things like um, boxes and broken up wheels are just nice decorative things to put on bases. 
you don't want to overload a base with it because all the others will look ridiculous but if after you've done two or three bit stands of these you start thinking oh, i'll stick a jerry can on the next one or i'll stick something else on the one after that and then you spread them out some with some without across the whole force it just provides a little bit of visual interest and variety with every base has got three spent shell cases and a jerry can on it it starts to look like they're crawling through a junkyard so you can see in this still here the kind of different types of items that I've scattered across the base and the colours I've used. Jerry cans in World War II are not normally going to be bright red, but again it can provide a little point of interest on a model. I do put the occasional red jerry can on a vehicle and I occasionally put a quite a brightly coloured bit of tarp on a vehicle, not because it looks authentic at all, but because it kind of breaks up the sea of green and brown, um, which sometimes is quite nice to do. So before we go on to apply our washes and dry brush, we want to go back to looking at that webbing because it's probably the model for most people on, on kind of first glance, this model and this base is going to pass or fail based upon how well you've done that webbing. So it's definitely worth another solid pass. So you can see in the stills that I've done here, how I've moved down to a very, very small brush and how I take my brush and roll it to a point to a fine point with a very, very thin down bit of paint so that I can just tidy up all of the edges. I'm gonna block out the backpacks again a second time to make sure the collar's nice and solid, but most importantly, I am going to repaint any of those straps so that they're as neat as possible and as straight as possible, but also as bright as possible, because when we put the wash on, it's gonna dull it down a lot. So if you've only got a kind of thin coat on there, it's gonna disappear really. And the final detail on these particular models to go before we put the wash on is uh, some of the 30 cal loader is carrying a belt of ammunition. Um, I like to paint these in a brass colour. I've actually used GW's Balthazar Gold here because um, again, I think it just provides a little bit of visual interest on the model. But you're going to be very careful not to get any of this on any of the rest of the uh, soldiers' equipment because none of it is going to be brass. It's going to look really obvious and metallics are difficult to cover. So you'll see how I'm using the brush here and I'm tending to get the brush across the strip that I'm trying to paint across the front of it and at the edge there and running down. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use the shape of it to stop the brush from running over. So if the brush is fairly flat across something that's raised like that, it's not going to touch the other sides as long as you're fairly careful. So rather than just painting it like that, which might seem logical, try and paint it like that. So essentially that is our infantry finished. Um, there's two more steps to do. One is the wash and one is to dry brush the base. I'm not actually dry brushing the uniform because I feel it's, it lightens it too much, which is not something I want to do. I feel there's enough contrast on the model just from the wash. But I do want to put some tonal variation into the earth, even though I'm going to cover that with snow later. So for the dry brushing, as you can see here, I've used a medium brown, which is just a taster pot called Nutmeg, I think, from uh, Wilco's. It's just a little tester pot of emulsion. Um, but it's a, a much lighter colour than the one underneath. It's my base colour. And it's bringing out some of the, uh, the shape to that uh, basing texture that I've used. I'm going to help provide a highlight without too much fuss. And finally then, the wash. Um, th this, this step is going to put... Um, a dark line around every single shape and surface on this model. It's it's almost like somebody's going to go around with a brown uh, sharpie around everything, which is going to help give it contrast. There's two things to think about with this. One is is that brown the right colour for everything on this model? And with military models and brown like Agrax Earth Shade that I'm using here, it probably is. It may be not the perfect choice in each case, but it's not the wrong choice for any of them, even down to the flesh. And that makes it a really versatile wash. Well, the other thing is to make sure that it doesn't pool extensively in any area. I tend to find find is that um, if you dip and then wipe and then do one side and then the other side of a model and then work it into the model 
The important thing about the working it into the model is not only to make sure you've got it in everywhere, but as part of that working and reworking your way around the model with the same brush and the same amount of wash on that model, is you're stopping it from pooling and you're moving it from areas where it would pool into areas where it hasn't covered. You don't want to overdo it, but you definitely want to make sure that everywhere is covered because it's changing the kind of the tone of the whole model. Anywhere that you miss is going to stand out quite profoundly. All right, those are the models painted. That's the base done. The last thing to do is to just, in the case if you're doing the winter ones like I was here, is just to put some tufts on and to sprinkle on a little bit of snow. And then Bob's your uncle. These models, they're not beautiful, they're not perfect, but they are ready for the table and it didn't take too long. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, comment, share or subscribe this video. And if you are buying new games or new miniatures, please consider following our affiliate link to Wayland Games. It gives us a little bit of kickback and helps fund other projects for the channel. Thank you for watching. We're recording. Yeah. Hang on. I have to move to get you doing the dry bit. Does that matter? Okay. No, no, no. You need to keep. You need to keep fairly still. I think. I'm not going to see you painting anything though from this angle. So do I need to? Yeah, you need to pick it up. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Are you ready? Right. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, I'm still recording. <laughs> yeah.